What causes the omen that triggers psychic receptivity? All right, that's the question for today. That's question for number 95 on the list of the 144 fractal faculties of the tree of life. Now, if you'd like to get a complete listing of all 144 fractal faculties with, you know, just a, a short uh, couple sentences on each one, uh, just click the link in the description and I'll send that out to you for free. Also, if you'd like to uh, get a little refresher course on your Tree of Life understanding, just watch my video called Tree of Life and Introduction. It's about 10 minutes long. Should uh, get you up to speed enough to be able to watch all 144 of these videos. Now today, we're looking at number 95. So get my tree out here. The tree of life, you can think of it as a more or less a map of our consciousness. Each one of these uh, 10 numbered circles, uh, numbered 1 through 10, plus the abyss, and the zero, so a total of 12, are our different aspects of consciousness or faculties of consciousness or potentialities of consciousness or even parameters of consciousness. And um, today we are here in the abyss and we're centered here and the abyss corresponds to one of these 12 aspects of consciousness. Uh, Particularly, it corresponds to our psychic powers, um, which uh, adds up to our ability to uh, be receptive to and to respond to omens. Okay, now an omen is uh, physically is basically a magnetic charge. When we step into the field of the magnet, we sense the omen, and uh, an omen is basically an uh, anomalous occurrence, something that is very improbable that happens right in front of your face, where you see a recurring name, a recurring number, a big, big, big coincidence, um, an uncanniness or a synchronicity, where something jumps out at you, and you're like, wow, that was really weird. Um, and that is something that triggers your psychic receptivity. Now, we can react in a couple of different ways. We can either say, oh, wow, that was weird, and then just go about with our business. Or we can say, wow, that was really weird. That means that it's something important for me to pay attention to and to uh, dig into a little bit deeper to figure out what I'm supposed to do about that. So that is a positive reaction of your psychic receptivity. That's activating your psychic receptivity if you recognize that that's important and you pay attention to it. Um, and then the second half of our uh, psychic powers is our psychic heat. This is our ability to act upon the omen. So when we are receptive to it and we, we pay attention, we will uncover the uh, path of action that is prescribed by the omen, what to do about that omen. And if we take that action, uh, that will be the activation of our psychic heat. Now, the reason why it's psychic heat is because it's difficult. It's hard to, to uh, even when we know what to do, it requires courage in order to do it because it is something that's going to put us out there. It's going to expose our vulnerability. It's going to um, you know, reveal to other people an uh, action that they might not really be able to understand. Um, you know, it's going to maybe have some people whispering how you're uh, crazy or, you know, that something's wrong with you. So, but you have, you have to be able to activate, uh, to act upon the omen to activate your psychic heat. Okay, now that is basically how the abyss uh, works here. Now, that's one of our 12 faculties of consciousness. But to get from the 12 faculties of consciousness to the 144 fractal faculties of consciousness, we're basically taking the tree and taking it to a second power. So we're, we're taking the whole tree and we're shrinking it down 
all 12 aspects of it to the size of just one of the aspects or all of the aspects. So we're putting a miniature tree on each one of the 12 aspects of the tree. So even though the tent sphere is just one of our 12 aspects, we, we break down the tent sphere into its 12 aspects. So, you know, we have 12 aspects here, 12 here, 12 here, and so on for a total of 144. 12 times 12 is 144. So when we get up to the abyss, we can imagine that there is a mini tent sphere inside the abyss. There's a mini night sphere inside the abyss. There's a mini A sphere inside of the abyss. And today for number 95, we're concentrating on the mini first sphere inside the abyss. So this first sphere, we can imagine it being inside the abyss and it affects, uh, you know, it, it creates a uh, fractal faculty of our consciousness. And so this is the abyss, or this is the first sphere within the abyss. Now, what does the first sphere correspond to? This is one of our divine faculties, our omnipresence, all present, all at once, eternally. And the omnipresence is, is what we are able to tune into when we're able to quiet our mind uh, to the point that we can penetrate into our deepest center inside of ourselves. And when we get to our deepest center, uh, we find that what is, what's at our deepest center is the same as what's at the deepest center of everything. Everything has this deepest center to it, and they're all the same. Okay, so this is a unifying, a unifying aspect. We're all the same, uh, deep, deep, deep down. And that is, um, you know, kind of the omnipresence. This also has to do a lot with uh, geometry. Uh, kind of when you're going down into this quantum world where... Uh, everything is based up upon a geometrical grid. And so the, this is really inside of the abyss here for number 95. So number 95 is kind of taking advantage or taking into account both of those aspects. Number 95 is called ferromagnetism. Stage number 95 is about the perfect alignment of the strongest magnetic atoms. The ferromagnetic charge is so much stronger because stronger than, than, for example, paramagnetism or diamagnetism because its high valence allows an appendage of the atom, the D or F atomic shell, to carry the charge by itself. As such, the charge is distributed over only two dimensions instead of three. So the charge is highly concentrated, not diluted by a third dimension. The omen is a charged object in two dimensions, a magnetic, while charges in one dimension, electrical charges, are emotion. So 2D charged objects are omens, 1D charged objects are emotions. In a ferromagnet, the magnetic domains are all aligned the same way. So there is no resistance, like in superconductors. There are only negative ferromagnetic charges, which hedge against the positive magnetic rotations of the atom. A charge is a rotational vibration, and a magnetic charge is a two-dimensional rotational vibration. To visualize a magnetic charge, imagine a washing machine twisting back and forth and at the same time flipping itself upside down and back. So those two things are going on at the same time in a magnetic charge. For ferromagnetism, there must be a portion of the atomic structure that can vibrate independently of the main body of the atom 
so that the charge can be restricted to two dimensions only. This requires eight units of displacement to accommodate for a two-dimensional rotational vibration. Um, two to the third power is eight. So valence, or the C number in the atomic uh, configuration, the atomic uh, notation of the reciprocal system, must normally be greater than seven for the charge to be distributed over two dimensions only. Iron, Fe, is by far the strongest with a displacement of eight, uh, you know, on that uh, third level. Uh, it, iron is number 26 on the um, periodic table, uh, whereas the uh, zero valence is um, argon, number 18. Same as a third dimension, um, an excess of displacement dilutes the strength of the charge. So iron is by far the strongest at number 26. If you go over to number 27, which I, I think is uh, cobalt, uh, it's diluted. Its charge is diluted because uh, of that extra number of valence, that not, valence of nine instead of eight. Ferromagnetism is uncommonly strong magnetism, much like superconductors uh, with electricity, with a minimum of resistance in the form of heat. Unlike the universal magnetic properties of paramagnetism and diamagnetism, Ferromagnetism is north pole attracted to south pole, which uh, you can think of as like a vesica biscuit. The source of the charge alerts us to omens if we activate our psychic receptivity. All right, that is uh, the first fractal of the abyss. Number 95, ferromagnetism. We will have plenty more to say about that as we move into the unit on the reciprocal system. Just keep in mind this stuff is uh, not a legacy mainstream uh, science. This has to do with the reciprocal system of theory, which is a uh, an integrated system of uh, from uh, that goes into every subject. Uh, that was originated by Dewey B. Larson back in the 20th century and uh, kind of uh, brought forward and updated by Bruce Perrette here in the 21st century. And um, we will be uh, devoting a unit, a long unit, uh, specifically to uh, studying and trying to understand the reciprocal system. But for now, just kind of let it uh, wash over you and just kind of keep it in the back of your mind. And hopefully it will, um, you know, come, it will it'll make more sense as we go along. Although it should make some sense now because um, the mainstream science is somewhat analogous to the reciprocal system. They use kind of the same terms, terminologies, but they have... Uh, the, the mainstream science uses the same terms, but they are not really able to explain these things, whereas the reciprocal system has explana explanations for all of these things. So it's not so much a revolution in like the scientific uh, empiricism, but it's more a revolution in the concepts that back up that science. But we'll get into that. Uh, thanks for sticking around for the rest of the video, for the whole video. Again, if you'd like the, um, the list of the 144 fractal faculties, just uh, click the link in the description and I'll send that out to you for free. Uh, if you have um, some money and you would like to donate to the project, uh, my Cash App and Venmo are listed in the description. And uh, otherwise, Stay tuned for more videos on this channel, number 96, 
will be uh, rolling out here in the next uh, in the next day, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, put together a few other uh, stray videos here and there uh, as we move on toward number one hundred forty four on the list. Um, okay, have a great day. Hope to see you soon.